about changing it up. We talk a lot about being conscious, right? You hear it from me a lot, staying conscious, consciously choosing. Talked a lot about that last week. We talk a lot about the subconscious, where all the stories in our life hangs out, the ideas, the beliefs, the ideals that we have. Today, I want to explore what is going on in your and my unconscious. Now you might say unconscious, is that a thing? You're unconscious, what's in there, Where, where's it at? Well, you know, the brain <laughs> is a very busy organ. It's running the body, it's constantly taking information in and, and putting information out for that matter through the senses, making decisions all at the same time. There are hundreds of millions of things going on simultaneously that your brain, the greatest, what we might call today, computer, that there is. Now, the unconscious is an engine of information processing, and most human functioning takes place in it. Your breathing is pretty much an unconscious act. They say involuntary act, but it's an unconscious act. You just do it. You don't usually take a deep breath unless you consciously believe you need to or follow instructions to. You just breathe. You don't think about blinking your eyes unless something gets in it, and then you blink them to release that. You just do it. It's unconscious. The unconscious is the place your reactions are stored. This, it's this black hole where your automatic responses get sucked into and just kind of float around, waiting, waiting for the trigger that pulls them out to do everything from lashing out to hugging and smiling. In the unconscious, we process our reactions or responses as well to any condition in a split second. Now, I do teach that a response is different than a reaction because a response is a, a choice. But there are things going on in our unconscious that help you inform that choice or help you to learn from that information that informs you into that choice of response versus reaction. You see, we've already set up procedures by accepting things in our life, ex ex accepting ideas in our lives to answer whether it's a call of criticism or compliment. We automatically react to that in one way or another. The attention of our lover versus that of a stranger. We have a, an instantaneous, unconscious response to either of those things. Through our perspective of life, we've set up rules for what to think, what to feel, and what to do about the conditions, experiences, or situations we encounter. Like right now, I'm sitting outside on a porch. It's the Southeast. It's muggy and hot and Many people, if not most people, would run inside to the air conditioning because it's relatively uncomfortable. I don't mind this personally, but many, many people's first reaction, unconscious action, would be to get out of there, get into the car and uh, turn the air conditioning on or just get back into the, to the house. Now, these rules and regulations can also make us run on automatic. And, and since some of those rules and procedures and perspectives are colored by trauma or filtered by drama or molded by the messiness of life, it's not always a good thing, right? Running into the air conditioning, that's a good thing. But sometimes our automatic reactions and our unconscious reactions aren't really a good thing. Because habits or addictions that we've picked up also drive the unconscious automatic responses. We feel anxious, 
So we smoke. We feel stressed. So we go and buy and eat an entire pie. We feel unappreciated and we go have anonymous sex. We feel tense and we drink, buy something we don't need or can afford or take a pill. That happens all the time to too many people too many times. Because you see what the reward is to temporarily not feel that negative emotion, that anxiety, that uncertainty, that not feeling appreciated. The response to that cue from the experience, the condition that caused that cue, that caused that negative emotion to happen to you um, is automatic. It's automatic because we have become addicted to the end result, which is to not have that anymore. No matter the suffering it may bring, we will go take the pill. We will go eat the entire pie. We will smoke two, three cigarettes or have a drink. And when we get, when we get to doing that often enough, it can be difficult to get conscious about it, to get conscious that that is the, that is what we use the response to get the reward, which is to not be anxious anymore, not to feel that negative emotion. And we have to be extremely conscious to put a stop to it because it's automatic. It's easy. And, you know, the pie is good. You buy a good pie and you eat it and it's good. So it's hard to think that that's a negative thing. Well, to get conscious, you got to first start becoming aware of your unconscious behavior to stressful stimuli. stimuli. You got to start to notice them. And let them become red flags. It may not happen at once. You may just decide to decide to watch for it. And it may take a little time. Because maybe you've been doing this a long time. But slowly, sometimes, sometimes very quickly, most of us can be very aware of our addictions to negative stimuli. But slowly you start to notice them. Slowly they become red flags. And you start to bear witness to how you feel and what you do when you feel that emotion, which leads you to that usually, if not potentially harmful activity or thought, then, then you can consciously take the path of watching and observing. And this is the important part because you don't want to step into shame, blame or guilt or anything because that, that doesn't help you. It slows you down. It takes you two, three, four or five steps back. You want to become curious, curious about this. And we, I talked a little bit about this a, a couple of weeks ago. Curious about the cue, response, and reward circle that you've created, right? And I always get back to this because it's always true. Your spiritual practice, especially meditation, um, affirmations or affirmative incantations, and affirmative prayer, all those spiritual practices, and there are many others, of course, even getting your feet on the ground and, and earthing, um, taking a, a nice long walk in nature, being in this wonderful, humid climate, that can be a spiritual practice, too. That can be a way to um, awaken and, and, and become aware of what's going on. But any of these spiritual practices... Practices will increase your ability to become conscious about the cue, response, reward circle and start to be able to consciously, because the conscious mind is more powerful than the subconscious or and or unconscious mind. So it will increase your ability to being conscious about the cue, response, reward circle and able to consciously deal with the things things that show up by thoughtful response and not on unconscious automation until you change because you can and you will change that unconscious automatic reaction to an unconscious automatic response remember responses are usually consciously invoked and thus a little wiser not all the time but 90 something percent of the time versus the 
unconscious automatic reaction, which is usually negative. That's where the lashing out, et cetera, comes in. So by doing this, we, we start to change the unconscious automatic response to one that is healthy and constructive, to one that is automatically loving, one that is automatically calm and poised, zen, some people might say, automatically feeling instead of emoting. Remember, I talk about the difference between emotions and feelings. Emotions happen to you, from you, but to you, through you, but to you. Feelings is something you do consciously. You have a feeling. I am going to have a feeling. I choose to have this feeling of love. So you're responding then when you change these automatic responses through the spiritual practice instead of reacting. You're automatically revealing the divine that is within you. The divine does not lash out. The divine doesn't go off to the corner and pout. You automatically start revealing the divine in you in your unconscious responses. And you start vibrating at the speed and frequency of the universal presence. See, all this stuff may sound like um, psychological stuff, may sound like a, um, uh, that was a nice one. It sounds like um, I'm putting you on the couch and, and, and teaching you things like, uh, like uh, Dr. Freud or something. Um, but they all come together, the science, the science of the mind and the science of the consciousness all come together in a spiritual manner. And I, I wanna stress both. I wanna stress the practicality of the science of the mind as well as the spirituality of the science of mind. They meld into one as we use them, as we allow them as we consciously invite them into our awakening, into our awareness. Now, I understand a bunch of stressful stuff is, is still going on in the world, it is pretty much continuously going on in the world, in your lives, most probably in one way or another. And, and I want you to know, it's gonna be okay. And why is it gonna be okay? Because we are deciding it's going to be okay. Not that your life might not change, that, not that you may lose a friend, not that you may change jobs, and that can be stressful in itself. But it's going to be okay because you are going to decide. And if you can't know the truth for yourself right now, then allow me to do it for you. You are going to decide to steep into the communing with nature communing with the power and presence, the communing with the source of all things, and thus manifesting into your life, your greatest life. And you get to decide what that is. Not me, not anyone else. You get to decide. Your purpose is to be joyous. Not, not necessarily just happy, but to be joyous. And joyousness and happiness aren't necessarily happening at the same time. Joy is a deeper feeling, a deeper satisfaction. Joy is that communing and communication and the vibrating at the speed of the divine, where that soul energy lies, where that soul energy frequency keeps humming away. Your purpose in life is to work your passions. Even if they're not part of your job or career, they don't have to necessarily coincide, though they may. And also to share your time, talent, treasure, and happiness with others. That's a part of living is to share that. You don't want to just sit and do that alone. Share that. That's such great joy happens when you share your time, talent, and treasure with others, with other people, with other organizations, with your family, with your friends. Again, only you can define what that is, what that passion is, what that personal purpose is, and thus keep it holy in your heart and sacred in your mind. 
The universe is full of infinite possibilities and infinite opportunities, my friend. You don't run out of them. And don't think that I don't understand this. I feel the same way too at times. And I have to remind myself, no, no, you're not trapped. You're not done. You haven't failed and thus there's nowhere to go. There is infinite possibilities in this universe. Infinite opportunities, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the condition is, no matter what the health of your body is or your mind or your career or life or relationships, no matter what. The universe has plenty to give out. There is light for your darkness. There is heat for your cold. There is chill for your sweat. There is love for your pain and courage for your fear. There's insight for all of your questions and answers for any of your ignorance. It's all available to you, to me, to anyone and everyone right here, right now. And the power is in you. The power is in you, for you, with you, as you, at all times. You individualize that, that divine energy, that divine intelligence, that divine love. That power is in you to make your conscious thought steeped in wisdom and make your unconscious behavior, make your unconscious behavior conscious and constructive. You are being, hmm, you are held in the hands of grace, forever safe in the arms of love, like a child receives protection from a mother's warm embrace. You are held in the hands of grace. The title of my talk is Changing It Up. And the it is in capital letters, changing spirit that is within you up, changing it up, not changing it out, there's no reason to, and I'm not sure you could, change it out. Of course, you can ignore it and let your trauma, drama, and missteps lead you versus the divine power that you individualize lead you. The it is your consciousness, your mind, the divine that is revealed in you at all times. And no matter the unconscious junk that's gone on before, you can change it up in your life, in your mind, in your body, in your gut. You can change it up with prayer, with meditation, with awareness, awakening, patience, faith. And finally, when you're ready, conscious choice. And you can be ready in an instant. You can change your thinking, change your vibration, change your frequency, change your perspective, and thus change your life. And why? Because the light of love surrounds you. The love of source enfolds you. The power of light, the light of the universe protects you. The presence of creation watches over you wherever i am wherever you are god is wherever i am god is breathe with me as you breathe in say i am i am exhale and now let us know the truth breathe in i know god is you can change that word from God. And as you exhale, know I am. God is. I am. The divine is. I am. Love is. I am. The source of all is. I am.
and repeat after me with your hand on your heart. Peace in my body, peace in my mind, peace in my heart, and peace in my life. Om Shanti 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 to you all. Peace, peace, peace.